There's a guy wants to talk to you. A friend of mine suggested I watch a moon landing hoax conspiracy movie called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way of the Moon, and it took me a few days to find it, but in looking for it I came across this film, What Happened on the Moon. And I got 12 minutes into the movie and I couldn't go on. The first pieces of evidence they had were such blatant lies that I had to stop, but I thought I'd go over them here before my big review of A Funny Thing Happened. Now this film doesn't even get into their evidence until 10 minutes in. A serious continuity error can be found in the last book one mission, Apollo 16 of 1972. Let's take a look at the clear discrepancy in the record. We've dubbed this the jump salute. When the astronaut reaches the peak of his jump, his colleague takes a snap with the Hasselblad stills camera. Let's ignore the reasons as to why such a small jump in the much reduced one sixth gravity of the moon and continue instead with a dis- Okay, first, I'm not gonna let slide his comment about the so-called small jump on the moon. What he is saying is, since the moon has one sixth Earth gravity, this astronaut, John Young, should be able to leap some six times as high as he could on Earth. And it's a good point. What they don't mention is that John Young was some five foot nine, uh, 173 pounds, and was wearing a bulky 185 pound suit. Now, if he was on Earth, how high do you think he could jump uh, with 185 pounds on his back? How high could you jump with someone who weighed more than you on your shoulders? Now, given that he was five foot nine, you can figure that he just got a good 12 inch leap without even going into a crouch. And that's huge. They then go on. This is the resulting Hasselblad photograph of that event. The most significant difference between these two images of the same action is that in a still photo, there's a triangle of fabric that should be absolutely secure and motionless that has flapped up from the top of the pliss, the personal life support system, as the astronaut jumps into the air. In the TV freeze frame, we can see this triangular flap is correctly fastened and is therefore not visible. It's not flapped up. If it had done so, it would be very obvious in this rear view, the TV image. You can see the size and detail of the triangular flap from this view of the top of the pliss. How could this part of the vital life support pack not be correctly fastened in place on a real Apollo situation on the moon? In any event, actions taking place simultaneously, such as TV and stills photography of the same event and the same time, must show the same detail. Okay, now there are two important things they get wrong here, and I can't help but think that they did it on purpose. They say that the flapping piece cannot be seen in the film, but is in the still photo. Now, if you watch the film, and I'll play it back slowly here, you can see that the piece is flapping all along the way. But what they choose to show you and what they choose to focus on is the top part of the jump where they, this camera angle can't capture that flap any longer. They even go so far as to skip over it when they do the replay. The second thing is they say that this triangle here is the same as this triangle here. But in this high res version of the same photo, you can see that they are not the same. The real flap is coming from the front and over the right shoulder. The piece they point to is coming from the back and is centered. Now they have to have known this. They have access to the same information I do. So I believe they have to be intentionally lying. And with that, it wasn't even worth looking at the rest of the movie. These people are proven liars. I did, however, find a funny thing happened on the way to the moon, and I will review that in a much longer video. So until then, take care. Is there no one on this planet to even challenge me? Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.